And we're live now. Hello, everyone, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to Ubuntu On Air. We're with Randall Ross here today for a session where he's going to explain a bit as about uh, the Ubuntu Global Jam. He's going to solve all your questions. So make sure to, the you're on the RC channel, which is down below. Which is hash ubuntu dash on dash air on irc.freenode.net. So, Randall, can you explain us a bit of what this hangout is about? Absolutely. Thank you, Jose, uh, for hosting this hangout, and I'm honored to be here as a guest. Uh, I wanted to get in, in touch with everybody today to talk about the Ubuntu Global Jam, which is coming up soon, uh, March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Uh, which is just a little over a week away. And uh, this session is scheduled to be an hour. I'm not sure if we're going to run that long. It really depends on you. I'm looking for uh, your questions. So if you have any questions about the Ubuntu Global Jam, please use the IRC channel and preface your question with the word question in all caps. And uh, I'll get to all the questions I can in this time that I have allotted. One thing, uh, Jose, if you could mute. We're, uh, we're experiencing a lot of uh, feedback on, or sorry, machine noise on your end. Yeah, that should thank be fixed now. Okay, thank you. So uh, we have an example question from Jose on IRC, and his question is, what is Ubuntu? So if you all look at that, you'll be able to see the format for questions. And what I'll do is I'll periodically glance at the screen and, and take a look at what's coming in and, uh, and see if uh, I can answer them in any way I can. Before I get into questions, though, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Ubuntu Global Jam and uh, what the event is about and what we're trying to accomplish and uh, sort of uh, give you some ideas on what's going on around the world. First off, uh, this morning I checked the Ubuntu Global Jam count and we're up to 22 events worldwide and we're, I believe, in 20 countries and we have jams going on everywhere for different purposes around the world. We have translation jams. We have uh, bug reporting jams. We have test, uh, test and QA jams where people test the new release, Rearing Ringtail, and uh, report bugs against it, just verify that it is installable, et cetera. We also have uh, something unique for this cycle, and that is with the release of the Ubuntu phone and the Ubuntu tablet, affectionately known as Ubuntu Fablet, we are encouraging people to bring their devices to Global Jams, wherever they might live, and if they're in a position to give a demo uh, to do so for their local community and for anyone interested, uh, even passers-by who aren't necessarily involved in Ubuntu. So this cycle, we have a really, really uh, unique opportunity to raise the visibility and the excitement level about Ubuntu even more than in other cycles. So briefly, the Ubuntu Global Jam is a worldwide event where people around the world get together to work on Ubuntu, talk about Ubuntu, build community around Ubuntu, promote it, and generally help make Ubuntu better. And uh, I've been involved in Ubuntu Global Jams both locally in Vancouver and worldwide uh, for several cycles now, and I can honestly attest that this is one of the most fun events there is in the Ubuntu community. So. Uh, if you haven't set up an Ubuntu Global Jam already, please uh, consider doing so. One thing uh, that is a good resource, and you probably have seen my blog posts on Ubuntu Planet, and if you haven't, uh, just go to planet.ubuntu.com and feel free to look, look all this stuff up. But one valuable resource is loco.ubuntu.com. If you go to that site, you'll be able to see uh, all of the events that are planned around the world and you'll be able to check whether there's an event near you. Chances are, uh, given the size of the world and the, the fact that we're at uh, just over 20 events, chances are there isn't an event near you, but that, uh, that shouldn't dismay you. That is actually an opportunity to get an event going. If you, if you look at the map and at the event list and you don't see anything in your community or town, uh, please, by all means, feel free to add an event using the local directory. You will have to join a team in order to add an event, and that's a very straightforward process. Uh, the first thing you'll need to do is join Launchpad, if you haven't already, create an account there, it's completely free. And the second thing you'll need to do is locate the team that you're closest to, 
and join that team. And thirdly, once you've joined the team, you then will have the ability to add a new event to the calendar. Um, we're just over a week away from the Ubuntu Global Jam, and uh, some of you may be a little bit worried that we're perhaps too close to the event date to get a Global Jam off the ground in your town, but that that is absolutely not true. Uh, it's never too late to get going. Obviously, the more lead time you have, the more chance you have to advertise to the general public and perhaps to the non-Ubuntu crowd. But even with one week to go, uh, there's still plenty of opportunity to get an event scheduled and uh, gather a few people together. It only, only really takes two or three people to make a jam and uh, just help uh, spread Ubuntu in your community. If you are uh, in a position of having a bit more time uh, to devote to this, you can obviously post uh, flyers and promote the event outside of the Ubuntu community, which will uh, bring in new people that you haven't met before and will obviously raise the profile of Ubuntu. Um, you're probably wondering uh, who the gentleman is uh, to my left on the screen, or maybe to my right, I'm not sure. Uh, let me introduce Mike, Michael Hall. Michael is a member of the Ubuntu community team with Canonical. And Michael has been doing this, uh, I'd, I'd imagine, a lot longer than I have. And I brought Michael along for a few reasons. First off, uh, Michael has uh, excellent visibility into some of the things that are going on in the development community around Ubuntu and also specifically uh, some areas of Ubuntu that could use some assistance. As well, Michael has participated in uh, Ubuntu Global Jams and uh, has uh, a number of tips and tricks, I'm sure, that would, uh, would help us all to do better jams uh, this cycle. So Michael, if you could uh, briefly, maybe just, uh, maybe to get things started, just talk about your first Global Jam and maybe what happened there and, and maybe what startled you about it or what you found interesting about it. You know, I'm not sure which was my first Global Jam. I mean, I was uh, attending local events for quite a while before I knew anything about Global Jam, so I may have attended one not knowing about it. Um, recently, however, most of my Global Jam work has been done with uh, Chris Johnston, which uh, anybody who's been in the community for a while should know by now. Um, and usually it's just him and I, and we'll get together in a coffee shop or one of our homes because we live about 30 minutes away from each other. So, you know, it, it's just two of us, but we sit together and we start hacking on uh, Summit or Local Team Portal or something like that. And it's really nice. I mean, if you've got a friend local that's also interested in Ubuntu, it's a good time to just, you know, block out an afternoon or something and go hang out with them. That sounds great. So this cycle, we've got uh, a bunch of stuff going on. Maybe if you could highlight maybe some of the areas that you see that are perhaps uh, low-hanging fruit or areas in the Ubuntu project that, that you think might need a little extra attention this time around. So um, you may have noticed we had a uh, couple of release announcements lately. Uh, we've got the Ubuntu Touch preview out now, which has support for both phones and tablets. And uh, we've recently released the install images for that and instructions for flashing it on Galaxy Nexus, Nexus 4, 7, and 10. So what we would like to encourage Loco teams to do is to introduce those into your global jams because there's a lot of people who have been seeing these announcements. They've seen screenshots and videos online, but they haven't seen the actual physical device or been able to play with it. So if you or anyone in your team has one of these and they want to try flashing the Ubuntu Touch uh, image onto them, that that would bring a lot of excitement to your event and might get people out there who wouldn't otherwise uh, want to come out for a Global Jam event. So that, that's the big thing that I'd encourage people to do uh, specifically this cycle because it is so new and it does have quite a bit of attention and visibility right now. Aside That's from that, um, what we usually encourage is, uh, you know, do some coding, do some packaging, uh, do some testing. Uh, Nick Skaggs on my team has done a lot of work on um, uh, testing scripts for Unity and other parts of Ubuntu that you can go through, and it just helps us collect information to make Ubuntu better. Um, translations is always a good area. Uh, if you're 
a multilingual team. Um, Launchpad has a built-in support for translating packages that we ship with Ubuntu, and that's always a big help. It makes Ubuntu available to a lot more people. And then documentation is always a big area where we could use help. That sounds great. Lots of opportunities to pitch in. One thing I did yesterday, and I'm sure a lot of other people in the Ubuntu world did, is I, uh, I flashed my Nexus 7 with the, uh, the new phablet image, and uh, I'm planning on bringing mine to my global jam. And as Michael mentioned, if uh, you have a Nexus 7 or a 10 or a 4 or a Galaxy Nexus, uh, it might make sense to flash them ahead of time and uh, bring them along. And in the process of doing so, you'll learn a, how to flash them, and, and B, be able to help other people who may bring them as well to the event and get theirs flashed too. So it's a good opportunity for collaboration there that uh, is, again, uh, just a, a fortunate circumstance of the timing of this, uh, this cycle's Global Jam. So I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about what I'm seeing going around the world. Uh, we've got jams going on in pretty much every continent. Uh, I'm seeing jams in Europe. Uh, I'm seeing jams in Africa, uh, North America, South America. We've got a number of very large events planned. Some of them are multi-day events, and uh, looks like we've got a tremendous amount of enthusiasm building up for them. I'll talk a little bit about what uh, what we're doing in Vancouver this cycle, just uh, just to give you an example. We're we're a large-ish group. Uh, it's a city-based group. We have approximately 500 people. Um, We've been doing Global Jams now for approximately four years, and we normally used to do uh, what we used to call bug jams, where we get together and, and try and find bugs in the, in the pre-released version of Ubuntu and, and report those as a team. And over time, we morphed the events into uh, more of a uh, smorgasbord of activities. We have a lot of people who speak different languages in Vancouver. It's a very multicultural city. So we have spent some time doing translations. We're planning on doing more of those this cycle. We also uh, have a history of, of doing documentation for Ubuntu. So uh, we're planning on looking at the different guides that we've prepared, uh, Unity being one of them, Ubuntu Software Center being another, and potentially revising those and getting them ready for the, the new release of Ubuntu. But aside from that, the documentation side, uh, we came up with a little bit of an interesting idea this time around, and that is we're going to be putting together a series of uh, one-page tips and tricks for Ubuntu. Basically, uh, we're calling it What I Wish I Knew Before I Started to Use Ubuntu. And it's just going to be very easy, simple to follow guides about one, one or two tips at most that will help people that are very new to Ubuntu kind of get oriented and... Uh, uh, hit the ground running and not get stuck in the same places that a lot of us got stuck when we first started. Um, I've noticed the past few years the number of people coming into Vancouver and I think in the just in the local community in general worldwide uh, we're experiencing a lot of uh, new people coming in who really have no experience with Ubuntu and I think this is a great way to help uh, help them again get grounded and uh, understand how to how to participate and how to become part of the Ubuntu community. Um, aside from that, we're planning on doing a little bit of socializing. We always set aside a, a couple hours to just hang out and chill and talk about Ubuntu and get to know one another uh, because by getting to know one another, we start to understand what our strengths are, what our interests are in the community, and that builds a stronger, uh, potentially a stronger Ubuntu participant community. So getting to know each other is important. We also plan on, uh, of course, bringing jam. Jam is a regular fixture at our Ubuntu Global Jams, and uh, we've uh, actually we've been trying to add to Jam every cycle. So last cycle we we all brought Jam and uh, and toast and everything to put Jam on, and then we decided well we need more Jam than just Jam, so we uh, we decided to wear our pajamas. So I'm not sure if that appeals to everyone out there, but uh, it's one of these Ubuntu quirks in Vancouver. We will be jamming in our pajamas for those who want to. Of course, that's totally optional. Um, and uh, we're thinking this year, you know, we have to add a third jam to our jam because you can't just have two. So we're thinking of either causing a traffic jam, uh, which I, we're investigating the, the legalities of that right now. Yeah, I don't or, think the city would appreciate that too much. 
Yeah, I don't know, but it's it sure is fun trying. We have these banners. There's one behind me right now that uh, would be very useful in, in forming a traffic jam. Um, the other thing we're trying to or toying with is perhaps doing a music jam, and have we have a few musicians in the group, so bringing our guitars, our keyboards, and uh, other items down to the jam, and just to uh, create some music together, maybe maybe add some music to the uh, Ubuntu theme music that seems to be popping up in uh, different circles around the web. So that's what we're doing, and uh, I think a couple of questions have come in through uh, IRC. I think I'm going to try and tackle those now. And maybe maybe while I'm doing that, Jose, if you can try and add our, our third guest, if possible, uh, I'd like to bring him in and see if we can get rolling on that. For sure. Uh, in, the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, we have a question. Uh, you mentioned a promotion of the Ubuntu Global Gen, super important. Uh, where can we get materials to make, like, posters or flyers or anything that can promote these global jams? Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, the best resource that I, I can think of is Spread Ubuntu. Uh, the Spread Ubuntu website, spreadubuntu.org, has a number of uh, global jam logos, flyers, posters, and promotional materials that have been used in prior cycles and uh, can be repurposed for this cycle. Uh, a lot of it is uh, done in GIMP or Inkscape, so it's very straightforward. If you have uh, some rudimentary design skills, you can bring those, bring those into uh, those applications and modify them for your town. Uh, so I'd start there, spreadubuntu.org, and uh, see what's there. If nothing there kind of strikes your fancy, another thing you might want to do is just quickly whip together something on your own. There's nothing nothing stopping anyone from creating their own Ubuntu Global, global Jam promotional material. Uh, the, key, the key factor is, of course, uh, clearly specify your location and uh, okay, sorry, we got a lot of noise there. I'm not sure if everyone else heard it, but I certainly did. Um, yeah, in your promotional materials, make sure, of course, to specify the location, where you'll be meeting, basically what you'll be doing, and, uh, and encourage people to RSVP for the event on the local directory so that uh, people will, so you, the organizer, will know who's coming and, and basically what everybody wants to do. So in case you're wondering, I'm going to uh, move away from the questions just momentarily, but in case you're wondering, we've had a new person join us. And you're probably wondering, okay, who's this guy and where did he come from? So uh, I'd like to welcome to the show Tadius Park. Tadius, I know I'm pronouncing your name wrong, so apologies in advance. Uh, for everyone out there, Tadius is in Prague uh, and has uh, been busy working on creating a, a global jam for his city. And I invited Tadius along to uh, talk a little bit about what's going to be going on in Prague and uh, perhaps uh, help our, our people out there uh, get some ideas and just understand what other communities are doing around the world. So, Tadius, I'm going to turn the mic over to you, and maybe if you could just uh, give us a brief introduction about yourself, how you got, uh, maybe initially got involved in Ubuntu, and then uh, perhaps, if you wish, talk about the uh, Prague Ubuntu Global Jam and, and what's going to be happening there. Okay, so, uh, hi. I hope you can uh, you can uh, see and hear me well. Yeah, we can. actually can. That's okay, good. okay. So, uh, first of all, hi, hi all. My name is uh, Tadeáš Pařík. The pronunciation is uh, is not uh, is not so easy, so it's okay. And uh, Ubuntu community in Prague and something about me. Okay, it's a quite interesting question. Uh, I have started with Ubuntu uh, in 2008. Um, I read an, uh, an interesting article in the newspaper about about Linux. It was called "Very Easy Way to uh, to to Linux." It was about Wubi uh, in Ubuntu. Uh, so I started to uh, use this uh, this distribution. It was quite interesting. And after several years, um, okay, I joined. I joined the com the community. Uh, then 
I started with uh, co-administrating the Czech Ubuntu community here, here in Prague, together with uh, Wojciech Trefny. And uh, then, let's say I'm responsible, for example, for Czech Ubuntu pages and so on. So uh, it's a quite interesting work. It's my hobby. Uh, so it's it's it's, in, it's interesting job. But uh, I think you wanted to uh, to hear something about uh, global gems here in Prague. Uh, it's not our our first global gem. I think uh, we have organized already four or five sessions here in Prague and not only Global Gems. We are organizing also informal sessions for our fans and members here in Prague and not only in Prague but around uh, the Czech Republic. And, uh, and also for example uh, release parties and so on. But the Global Gems, uh, I would say it's really it's really it's really easy to organize so don't think about it just do it organize it you can you can um, invite your friends and you can introduce uh, ubuntu as like really interesting distribution so it's 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 really it's really interesting in our case um, we pay attention to especially to translations because we want to help uh, the community and in our case in the Czech Republic we have uh, in comparison in comparison with the other countries uh, we have uh, translated 90 97 uh, persons of all strings launchpad so it's quite it's quite good yeah so I think the translation for example translation is a really good start or how you can start with uh, the global gems it's for normal standard users and you don't need any technical technical skills like for example uh, for bugs on launchpad and and so on yeah. great that's a great introduction so tell me uh how how many people do you usually get out at your jams, and uh, where do they usually come from? You mentioned they come from other cities as well. But give give us a sense of uh, of where that is. Uh, it uh, it really depends, but uh, I would say 10, 15, 10, 15 persons, yeah, and especially students, students from from Prague, yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not student. Uh, I'm twenty, twenty-seven years old, and I have my family. But especially students from Prague are participate are participating on this uh, on this uh, activity on our global gems. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, what advice would you give uh, people out there who are perhaps in a in a city that's uh, not represented? well in the Ubuntu Global Jam. What advice would you give them to uh, sort of get things started? It's easy. Just just start. Don't think about it. Just do it. If, if, if you like, if you like Ubuntu, if you like our community, if you want to comp contribute, uh, if you want to help, just start. And as I said, you can start with, with the translations. You can, for example, help uh, to uh, to install Ubuntu to our to to or to your to your friends, yeah. So just start and do it. Great, great advice. Uh, anything else, uh, Tadius? Before uh, before we say goodbye, any other words of wisdom? Uh, so nothing else. Thank thank you very much for your for your in invitation. It was it was really interesting, and I hope see you soon. Thank you, Tadius. And okay. looking forward to pictures and seeing all the fun out, out in Prague. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Yeah. See you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, with, uh, with Tadius uh, and, and those words of wisdom, I'm going to switch back into the questions. Do we have uh, any questions queued up, uh, Jose? Yeah, we do. Uh, let me just check here. Um, there is a question saying, uh, where can one find resources and how to test? That's a great uh, question as well.
Oops, we're back now. Okay. Are we back on there? Yeah, we are. Okay. So uh, we've been having some problems with uh, uh, plugins, etc., with uh, this on-air thing. So my apologies to everyone out there. Uh, so the question was, uh, how do we find resources for testing? So uh, Nicholas Skaggs is a member of the community team uh, with Canonical. And Nicholas and uh, some others, actually some community members, have created a series of wiki pages on how to do testing. If you go to the, the main page for the Ubuntu Global Jam, it does link to, so go to loco.ubuntu.com and click through to the Ubuntu Global Jam. And uh, yeah, once you click through there, you should be able to locate the wiki for the Ubuntu Global Jam. And in that wiki, there are a bunch of testing pages. Uh, we may, we're going we're gonna to try and get uh, Nicholas on air for this session. Uh, just kind of as a, a, an ad hoc thing if he's available, but uh, your best bet for the time being is go to the wiki and uh, take a look at the testing pages that he and his team have created, and uh, that should give you some pretty good guidance. If you don't find what you're looking for there, you can always reach out to myself. Uh, I'm easy to reach. I'm at randall at ubuntu.com, or you can join the Ubuntu community team channel on IRC. That's hash ubuntu dash community dash team and ask questions there, and uh, someone would be happy to help. I, I hang around that channel as well as do other members of the community. So there's a few different resources for you there. Um, I hope that answers the question. Um, if we're still on the air, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not seeing Jose's photo, but uh, I guess... Yes, we are on air. Okay, great. Um, I like, there's quite a few people uh, in the IRC channel, and I'd like to get a quick, maybe a quick show of hands, if you would uh, do a plus one if you have a Ubuntu Global Jam in your city. Let's see if uh, we get a few hits on that one. So who in the Ubuntu, or who in the channel right now has a, a Global Jam already scheduled somewhere near them? So we got Todd C is plus one uh, so far. And uh, maybe if you could, if you're, if you're willing to disclose the cities that have Global Jams, uh, by all means, go ahead and do that. And uh, we can uh, get a sense on where, where we are. So uh, Todd C, Ubuntu, Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, Maya today. Todd, you're in Tampa, Arizona. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, plus ones coming in. That's great. Seems that we have a lot of, uh, a lot of people already planning. Cape Town, South Africa, that's great as well. That's awesome. So we do have a number of people who are on the channel right now who are, are planning uh, Ubuntu Global Jams, which means that uh, we even have an opportunity right now if people have questions to, uh, that perhaps they don't want on the air, uh, you can always ask them in the channel, and I'm sure, uh, sure people will, uh, will enjoy trying to answer them and uh, offer their advice. So out of, uh, out of curiosity, uh, how many people don't have Ubuntu Global Jams in their town or city? And uh, maybe the best way to, uh, to indicate that is uh, to either type your city name or type minus one, and let's, let's see what the count is there, and let's see what our opportunities are. Perhaps uh, there's some people who can, who can help get things rolling in your towns or cities. So far, no takers on that one, although I see a minus one for Isle of Man. Uh, I'm not sure what the population of Isle of Man is, but probably not uh, not a huge population. I do know one famous person that lives there, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if uh, if a global jam pops up there. So 80,000 is the population of Isle of Man. Thanks for clarifying that. So do we have, uh, while we're waiting for people to identify their cities, uh, do we have any other questions that uh, need to be answered? Let me just uh, scroll up and take a look, or if you know Jose. I have seen no questions up to now, but if you have any, you can go to the IRC channel, which is down there, and ask your questions. All right. So while we wait for questions to come in, um, let's see, what, what else can I talk about? So I was in communication with... Uh, with some people who are already organizing jams, there is a big, a big jam going on in Brazil, uh, and I believe that's a multi-day event. 
So if you're in Brazil, please uh, go to the local team portal, take a look at that event and uh, try and participate. I believe translations is a big focus there. And uh, I know the team in Brazil is, is very, very large, so uh, um, means check that out. I mentioned Trinidad and Tobago earlier, and uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see that one hit. I know that uh, it's a small community in Trinidad, but uh, we've had uh, some interest in building a global jam there, and I'd like to thank uh, the Trinidad team for taking an initiative there and uh, bringing, bringing those people together and uh, contributing to Ubuntu. So I just saw another question come in here. Where do we get stickers for the Ubuntu Global Jam? Um, that's a great question. We don't, uh, as far as I know, we don't have any official stickers for the Ubuntu Global Jam, at least nothing that is provided, um, you know, on a sponsored basis. Uh, what we've been doing in Vancouver is we've been uh, basically printing uh, the stickers that are the Ubuntu Global Jam logo, the one that, uh, that appears on the main page and uh, giving those out to people that attend. We also do have Ubuntu stickers that we've uh, picked up at, at conferences and UDS summits and, uh, and even some we've printed ourselves. So it's really up to the in individual teams if they want to pursue the stickers to uh, print some up and uh, hand them out to people that show up. We find that having stickers around is actually a, a very useful way to uh, not only uh, thank people for coming out and, and helping, but also for people who perhaps haven't uh, haven't encountered Ubuntu before. For example, if you're doing your Ubuntu Global Jam at a public place, like a coffee shop or or a restaurant or some place that has visibility, or a library or a community center, and uh, you do encounter the general public, the, the non-Ubuntu public, uh, having a sticker at hand is a good way to uh, to build kind of a a rapport with them and also to give them something to take home that they can look up later. So if you are printing out stickers, I'd advise you not only to print, you know, the name of your group uh, and Ubuntu on it, but also give them a way to find you later, a URL to your group's page or a URL to, you know, some way of getting back in touch with you will, will help immensely in building up your local community. So uh, thanks for that question and uh, by all means go out and uh, uh, print out some stickers. Sometimes what I've done, uh, if I have, if I don't have the lead time to go to print, I uh, just use my uh, my inkjet printer. It actually does a, a fairly good job in uh, in printing on standard sticker stock that you can buy at uh, your local office supply store. And given the fact that Ubuntu Global Jams typically are are less than a hundred or so people, uh, printing out a, a low quantity of stickers in that manner isn't isn't uh, too big an issue. So that's another opportunity for you to consider there. Um, so we have a question from uh, Red Tape Renegade. What was the type of jam that you showed Jonah last week? I will ask Alan Bell to get some stickers for the UK Irish populace. Thank you. So the type of jam that uh, I showed last week was uh, blueberry jam and I actually chose blueberry jam I should have brought it on camera, but it's uh, it's in the fridge, and if I go over to the fridge now, it's uh, going to mean all my wires get ripped out here. So, But it's uh, blueberry jam. I chose blueberry because uh, actually when you spread it on bread or or, or anything for that matter, it, it looks purple. So uh, that being one of the colors, uh, foundational colors of Ubuntu, I thought it would be useful to have purple jam. I've been encouraging people to... Uh, to bring purple jam or orange jam to the uh, to the Vancouver Global Jam, and and I, I know that gray is also and black is also uh, primary colors for Ubuntu, but I don't I don't suggest we bring any gray or black jam. At least uh, I can't think of any that would be uh, edible or at least uh, interesting to look at or taste. So it was blueberry jam. Thanks for that question. Um, let's see what else. Does anyone have, uh, is anyone in a town where uh, there isn't an Ubuntu Global Jam that is perhaps bigger than, say, 50,000 people? Does anyone want to want to share a town of that, uh, that size? I'm just curious what's out there and uh, perhaps what uh, opportunities we, uh, we may have missed in some of the, some of the other towns that perhaps aren't, uh, aren't large. Any takers on that one? Not so far. And the questions seem to have slowed down. So either I'm doing a tremendous job answering them, which is probably not true, or 
it's self-explanatory, which might be true. Or maybe I'm just boring everyone with my monologue. So uh, feel free to ask more questions. I'm curious, uh, Jose, if, uh, if we'll be joined by Nicholas and uh, if we want to bring him on at this time. Yeah, I'm working on it right now. OK, that's great. So while, while uh, Jose works on bringing Nicholas Skaggs online, um, Let's just talk about testing for a little bit. I've uh, done a little bit of, of QA type work in prior jams, uh, just from a very lightweight standpoint. I mentioned bug reporting earlier, triage, testing, that sort of thing. Um, we, uh, we have an opportunity this cycle as well to do something that's a, a little different, but still aligned with QA, and that is the Ubuntu friendly initiative. I'm not sure. Uh, if everyone out there knows what Ubuntu Friendly is, but in a nutshell, Ubuntu Friendly is the community-driven database of hardware that works with Ubuntu. So one of the problems I see in the Ubuntu community with people coming in is uh, a lot of people have hardware already and they're running other operating systems on that hardware and they're curious what to expect when they load Ubuntu on it. So Ubuntu Friendly is a a mechanism for people in the community who are already running Ubuntu to run a series of automated tests that will report hardware compatibility to a database. And then uh, people who are curious about uh, will Ubuntu work on my system, or more, more appropriately, I guess, will my system work with Ubuntu, uh, can go on that database and take a look and see uh, what's Ubuntu friendly and what's not. So there is, if you go again to the uh, the wiki for the Ubuntu Global Jam. There is a, a page on there for Ubuntu friendly, and we'll provide we'll provide links uh, after the show. But uh, that uh, that's where you can get that information. So that's another opportunity. If you have people in your group that have machines running Ubuntu, and I think we all do, encourage them to bring their machines down to, provided they're portable enough, bring them down to the Global Jam in your area and uh, run the automated tests on them and uh, let's help build our Ubuntu friendly database. The side effect there will be that people in your town or city will also benefit because uh, they will know neighbors and friends who are running hardware of particular types and should they run into difficulties, uh, help will just be a quick walk or a phone call away and that's a very strong way to, to build local community, to build a local support community around you. So. I'd highly encourage everyone to, uh, to consider Ubuntu friendly as part of this uh, Global Jam as well. Just going to glance down at IRC and see if we have anything else going. Um, so for people who are at home and want to join in the Ubuntu Global Jam, what channel do we follow on Freenode and what websites? So my um, as far as I know, we haven't set up a, an official channel for the Ubuntu Global Jam. Um, but what I would recommend is if you are planning on uh, jamming, you may want to join the Ubuntu channel, the main channel, and start there. Uh, I'm sure there will be other people around the world in Ubuntu that are jamming with you. And uh, so just go to hashtag Ubuntu and uh, meet people there that are jamming March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Um, yes, it's hashtag Ubuntu. And that's the, the main Ubuntu chat channel. So I noticed that we have uh, Nicholas Skeggs on air with us. He's to my left, I guess. Is this my left? I don't know. To my left, my right. I lose track. <laughs> it's my so right. Nicholas. Oh, yeah, I think it's my right. OK, Nicholas, thank you for uh, joining the special edition of Ubuntu on air. We're going to jam. Uh, for those of you who don't know Nicholas, Nicholas is a rock star in the Ubuntu community. He is looking after QA and all things related to testing and quality in Ubuntu. So this man is uh, someone to get to know and uh, definitely someone who uh, contributes in a big way to Ubuntu. And I, I wanted uh, Nicholas to join us today to talk a little bit about uh, what we can do as a community to uh, work on quality initiatives for the Ubuntu Global Jam. So just throw it over to you, Nicholas, and uh, let us know what's on your mind and how we can help. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, Randall originally approached me, I think, a few months ago talking about uh, Ubuntu Global Jam, and um, I know you've participated uh, a little bit in times past. Uh, I've Oops, we'll get him right back in a second. Okay, all right, let's do that. 
apologies, everyone. In the meantime, while we're waiting for Nicholas, if there are any further questions, please uh, type question in the channel. Any thoughts on running a jam online, Hangout IRC for a country? Team members spread out around the country. That's an excellent, excellent idea. There are uh, a number of teams that are running jams via IRC. Uh, I think there's a large team in Brazil that is doing that. So if you're if you're wanting to run a jam through IRC and not in person, uh, you can do it the same way. Go to loco.ubuntu.com and go to the Ubuntu Global Jam event page and register your your virtual jam uh, on IRC. And uh, it'll still show up in the directory. People will still be able to uh, to join you on IRC, and uh, just type in a channel name there that makes sense for your community. If there is already an existing channel for your for your local team, that would be a good one to use. If there's not, you can always set up a temporary channel that uh, is used for the Ubuntu Global Jam. So, for example, if Vancouver were to do a virtual jam, and uh, we don't have an IRC, by the way, IRC channel. Uh, I would just set one up temporarily as hash Ubuntu dash Vancouver dash global jam or something of that matter. And then people can join in and, uh, and uh, participate in that manner. So I hope that answers the question. We seem to be having some uh, connection difficulties with our friend Nicholas. So I'm going to give that a, just a couple more minutes to see. the best response, but I'll do my best. So uh, the wiki page for the jam is uh, perhaps, Jose, if you're in a position to type the page for the jam, our wiki. Sure. We're about like, but. There's loco.ubuntu.com, which is kind of the central organizing spot for the jam. And in that page, we have links out to different resources. But uh, we do have a, a special page set up for Ubuntu Global Jam and all the uh, all the instructions for that. There it is, wikiubuntucom slash Ubuntu Global Jam, and that's in mixed case. So Ubuntu is capitalized, Global is capitalized, Jam is capitalized. For those of you who are watching this after the event, um, so uh, Nicholas, you're back. Hopefully, hopefully to stay. Uh, I I hope so. Fair, Welcome back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hopefully that's not an Ubuntu quality issue. It's hopefully a, an issue somewhere else. Yeah, we'll, we'll blame Google. How does that sound? Oh, let's do that. There or my or my ISP. You know, we can there we can pick our poison. It's always okay. a network problem. Always. So if you, could, uh, <laughs> if you could give us some guidance as a community on how we can best help the uh, the QA team uh, and help Ubuntu get better this cycle. Yeah. Um, so one of the great ways that you can not only help Ubuntu during your jam, but also um, have a bit of fun is to uh, to help test. And so uh, we put together some documentation, We, meaning uh, the QA community team, um, wanted to reach out and help you guys uh, run your jam uh, more effectively. Um, so we realize not everybody has a, is a tester, has a testing mindset. Um, so we've really geared our, our documentation towards um, people showing up Having a laptop and uh, an ISO of the uh, of the latest and greatest of Ubuntu, um, and that's really all that you need. And so, if you if you could take a look at the uh, the Global Jam wiki page, which I'm sure Randall has happily linked you to at this point, um, you'll see one of the uh, along the top header that you can have a what's called testing jam. Um, but if you take a look up there, you'll see that we essentially have uh, a couple of different ways that people can contribute. And we have some information there for you as a potential session host about how you can hold your session. Um, so there's a little bit of reading that you might want to do uh, to familiarize yourself with some of the uh, different types of testing available and uh, a couple of the tools that, that are needed. Uh, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's some great videos and uh, written walkthroughs on the wiki that, that will help anybody who's new um, you know, be able to contribute whatever area they're interested in. So, for example, we have, um, we've broken it down into basically three different types of testing. One, you can t test the image, which is an actually installing 
or utilizing the the uh, ISO image, and that's either on you know a CD or a USB key, um, or you can do application testing, which is testing our default application stack inside of Ubuntu, or as I think Randall's already talked about a little bit, uh, doing some hardware testing. Um, so he mentioned the Ubuntu friendly effort, which is um, an effort to catalog the hardware and, and its compatibility and, and how well it works with uh, the different versions of Ubuntu. In this case, we're talking about testing a, a version of Ubuntu that's not yet been released. So one of the main focuses of hardware testing uh, in a development version is to look for regressions. And so that's one of our primary focuses. So we want to see if your hardware continues to work or if we have, you know, um, new features or uh, new hardware that is now working that didn't work in the previous releases. So that's one of the uh, one of the nice ways that you're able to contribute. And those tests are very easy. There's a there's a wonderful team um, who manages and, and helps keep those tests up and running. Uh, and again, as long as you are able to, uh, you've got a machine in front of you, you've got a copy of Ubuntu, and, and you can read and follow some simple instructions. You can help us. You can help test. That sounds great. What uh, with given your vantage point on the Ubuntu project and, and Rare Ringtail specifically, what are what are some of the uh, key spots that you'd like to see more energy focused on? Are there any particular components of Ubuntu or any any different areas that uh, you say would would need extra attention this time around? Sure. Um, our uh... Our images always always can use can use some love. I know that um, I'm going to give a shout out to all the flavors. They would they would definitely really very much happily appreciate any uh, results that you might give them for how their images are working or how their applications are working. Um, the flavors teams always um, are always looking for folks to uh, to to take a look. Um, I'd also encourage you maybe to look at hardware testing. Um, so again, talking about Ubuntu friendly, that's something that. Uh, that Charles Prophet and some other folks have, have really started uh, to ramp up. It's sort of gone from, um, it's in a transitional period at the moment. And so he, he's trying to sort of revitalize that, that project and uh, help simplify and, and uh, create a nicer feedback loop for people who submit um, results and that sort of thing. Um, but definitely uh, hardware testing, image testing, those, those things would be great. And, and uh, on my end, I'd love to plug... Um, the, the contributing test cases, which is the other half. Um, we talked about contributing results. The other thing that you can do is contribute actual test cases. Um, and we're definitely in need of any test cases that you might um, be able to write for your favorite, favorite application. Um, and that's, you know, it can be an automated test if you're a programmer and, and we've got some great cool tools. You can use Autopilot or Auto Package to write those test cases. But if you're not, that's okay too. Um, anyone can write a manual test case. Um, I've got a, a great video up on YouTube. It's linked off of that page. It, it describes the process, but it's, it's very simple. If, if you can tell me what it is, the steps that you go through in, inside an application um, to utilize a feature. Uh, right now, let's say, you know, I've obviously joined this Google Hangout, so I had to open my browser. I had to enter a URL, and up came my Hangout. Now, until it crashed on me a few times, everything was going well. Um, but that 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 in itself can be a test case, uh, just describing those steps and the expected results. Um, so I'd encourage anyone who who might uh, might have some favorite applications or things that they they feel might need some love. You know, uh, obviously I have my own view and my own things that you know my own personal bugs, um, but maybe you do too. And one of the ways that you can help with that is not only contributing results against those those test cases, but writing new test cases. Um, to sort of prove out any bugs that you might find or have found to prevent regressions in the future or potentially um, just help to make sure that that application is in good shape, you know, through each release. Great. Well, that's a great summary. The question came on IRC about flavors uh, and what is meant by flavors. Do you want to field that one? Oh, sure. Um, when I say Ubuntu flavors, I'm, I'm talking about... Um, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, Qbuntu, Ubuntu Studio, Mythbuntu, Edgeubuntu. Hopefully I got most of them or all of them. Uh, <laughs> but they, they represent um, different spins on Ubuntu. So what uh, essentially what it is, is is Ubuntu's core combined with a usually a different desktop environment or a different focus. Um, for instance, Ubuntu Studio has a, a large focus on doing AV work. And, and being for the audio or video file. 
um, somebody who really wants to get into that stuff. So they have some, some special tweaks and that sort of thing uh, and a customized desktop set towards uh, those different tasks. Uh, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, Kubuntu, those are all um, Ubuntu with a different desktop environment. So instead of Unity uh, for Kubuntu, for instance, you're going to get KDE. and Zubuntu, you're going to get XFC. Um, Lubuntu, you're going to get LXD and so on. Great. Great. Thanks for clarifying. Yep. And uh, that's, that's a, great, uh, a great introduction to the world of testing. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to come on the show at the last minute notice and, and give us that, uh, that briefing. Thanks very much, Nicholas. You can hang out if you want, and if you've got uh, other things to do, you can, you can go do them. It's up to you. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll probably stick around for a few minutes or until, uh, until Google okay. or my ISP decide that I can't be around anymore. Um, that, sounds, that sounds great. So uh, <laughs> we've got a bit of a fan club on IRC for you too, so I'm sure your, uh, your fans out there would like to see more of you. Um, so we don't have questions queued up right now. Um, so I don't know, Jose, you've been, uh, you've been pretty quiet right now or through most of the show, and I've, I've been watching Ubuntu on air sessions for, for quite a while, and, and one thing that comes up from time to time is, uh, who is this guy with uh, the fancy uh, patterns behind him, and what's he doing on all the on airs? Jose, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, let people know who you are and uh, how you got involved in Ubuntu and, and kind of where, where you find yourself in the Ubuntu community these days. Uh, well, uh, I got involved with Ubuntu in 2011 when I was 14 years old, I'm currently 16 years old. Uh, and I'm running these Ubuntu on air sessions right now. Uh, I'm the one in charge to manage like the pages and the accounts. So if you see me here, it's because like I'm the one who's got the access, the access credentials for the account, and I'm inviting all of you guys. If you have any sessions you would like to host here, uh, just send an email to onair at ubuntu.com, and we'll make sure to review your requests and see if we can do that on air. Um, well, about me. Have uh, you ever uh, have you ever been to an Ubuntu Global Jam? I'm not actually, because the community in Peru, I'm actually in Peru, <laughs> okay. that's in South America, in, just in case you don't know, the community in Peru is pretty inactive. Uh, last year I decided to turn it back uh, to turn it back on, and I'm currently the, the contact for, for the Peru team, and we're trying, well, I'm trying to host uh, an online global jam. Uh, we'll get the details for that soon, but uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to do my best to, uh, to get this on. That's awesome. Has anyone ever tried a uh, Ubuntu Global Jam on air or using Hangouts, I should say? Uh, not that I know of. This is the first year of Ubuntu on air. We started on the on the Q cycle, but we may try that. We may try that. Okay. Okay. That might be interesting to see how many people we can get in a Hangout and just uh, just jam that way. Uh, there well, is a question then... for you that just showed up. <laughs> Uh, the question is, why can't we comment on the YouTube channels, or can we? Um, on the YouTube channels, you mean on the YouTube videos itself? That's what I think, yeah. Okay, so uh, we're setting up this uh, Ubuntu on air channel because we wanted to... Uh, I think we're still in the air. <laughs> okay. And I, I think Jose's coming back in. Sometimes when the, uh, when the host drops, we go off air, but I'm not sure if we did this time. Welcome back, Jose. Thanks. So, it must have been something you said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, about the YouTube videos, uh, we don't have, uh, we don't actually support commenting on the YouTube videos because uh, I think it's Google. <laughs> okay, so we don't enable uh, YouTube video comments because we wanted to have everything in one place. 
That means if you go to irclocks.ubuntu.com, uh, you'll find logs for that hash Ubuntu dash on dash air, uh, which is the main channel for discussion and questions and everything we do on air. Um, we also have a discuss plugin we enable from time to time, and that's just for questions, no discussion. Although the discussion can be taken, can take place a year. Uh, actually, my connectivity is pretty good. The problem searched uh, with Google, like two or three days ago, but I've got a pretty good connection. Um, so we have everything locked and hashed even to dash on dash air. That's why we don't enable YouTube comments. Thanks for clarifying that, and thanks for uh, telling us a little bit about uh, what you do in the Ubuntu world. And uh, Jose is a bit modest because actually, without him setting this all up and and working behind the scenes to keep all of us on track, I don't think any of this would happen. Uh, Jose makes sure that a we're all ready for the conferences, and b we have our equipment ready to rock and our guests lined up and everything. So uh, the only thing he doesn't do is uh, is makeup at this point. Uh, but I'm sure if he could come to uh, Vancouver, he'd be putting lots of makeup on me. And maybe he'd come down your way, Nicholas, and, and uh, see it work his magic down there. But uh, thanks, Jose, for uh, for all that you do for Ubuntu. And hopefully we can get the, the Peru team rocking again and uh, get some jamming going on there. We're coming up close to the end of uh, the hour allotted here. There are uh, no, oh, wait. There's one more. There's one more question, and that is, are you guys going to do an Ubuntu on-air event for the actual Global Jam? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, good question. I don't think we have an answer at this point. Uh, I'm not aware of uh, any teams that are doing an Ubuntu on-air uh, session for the Jam or, or of an official on-air session for the Jam, uh, something we can certainly consider doing. I'll talk to a few other people and see if we can get something together and uh, you know, make that happen for people who don't have a jam in, in their town or city. Uh, frankly, though, what I'd, what I'd rather see, if possible, if, if you can, if you don't have a jam in your town or city, please try and make one happen. Uh, we still have time. We still have uh, a full week or, or more, depending on when you have it, uh, to get a jam rolling in your city. So please, please try and get that going. And, uh, and if we can go that route, it'll be, I think, a, a much richer experience. One thing I've considered doing this jam, and I'm not sure if we'll have the equipment, but uh, if we do have the equipment at our Ubuntu jam, I may turn the cameras on briefly, uh, maybe for an hour or so, just to uh, let people at least uh, come in and watch what we're doing and see all the shenanigans in Vancouver. Uh, again, that's equipment permitting, so don't, uh, don't hold me to that. If you see me post on Planet Ubuntu, then you'll know it's happening, and uh, you're welcome to tune in. So without... Uh, Further ado, I think uh, we're going to wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for joining the very first uh, We're Going to Jam Ubuntu on Air. And uh, we had some pretty good questions and some, some lively guests and commentary. So thanks very much for, for coming. Once again, if you have any questions at all about Ubuntu Global Jam, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm easy to contact. Uh, my email is randall at ubuntu.com. So it's easy to remember, easy to spell, all that good stuff. Just shoot me an email. I'd be happy to help you in any way I can, even if it's for, you know, just uh, really minor things. Sometimes that's all it takes to get a jam off the ground. So thanks again for coming. Thanks, Jose. Thanks, Nicholas. And uh, I wish you all a great weekend and uh, happy jamming, happy planning your jam. Watch the planet for further updates. Take care, everybody. I just want to mention, everyone, that tomorrow we're having a session on how to create applications for uh, the Ubuntu phone, the Ubuntu tablet, and the Ubuntu TV. So make sure to stay tuned. Subscribe to youtube.com forward slash Ubuntu on air. And follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Ubuntu on air. We'll be posting concept updates. And I'll see you tomorrow.